Hi, this is Mary from Second Time Tech. And today I'm going to be talking about uh, two different uh, coolers that I have tried in my studio computer. <clears throat> my throat's still a little sore from bulk ahead or whatever, so sorry for that. Anyway. The two coolers that I've tried are both uh, liquid AIO coolers, and they're both by Deep Cool. One is the 280 RGB, which is like last year's model, and then the other one is the uh, Castle 240EX, and uh, that's this year's model. It's the one that has the uh, leak-proof technology on it. But the big thing about it is that it is an EX model. And the EX means that they have 25% more of those fins on the inside of the water block. And so that should do better for the cooling. I know the, the reds are, and the, and the fans are smaller on the 240 than on the 280. But, uh, but the do, the difference in the, cooling plates on them. Uh, I don't know which one's actually going to be better. So we'll have a see and uh, find out what happens there. So a little bit on the studio computer. Um, whenever I updated the BIOS, I just left it basically the way it was. Um, but I did change the memory. And what I did was I put it in XMP format or mode, I should say, at uh, 3200 megahertz. And I tightened the timings. They were supposed to be 18, 19, 19, 19, uh, 39. And I changed them to 16, 17, 17, 17, 36. And then I ran mem test for two hours. Didn't have any errors. And I've been running it like that for a fair bit now and no problems. So we're okay there. Now, a little bit about what I did for a test. And what I did was I just, I took DaVinci Resolve and I rendered a video, uh, three times, like, uh, three separate runs. And then I ran it six times in a row on like a, like a little batch file type thing. So it continuously ran. And uh, what I did was I updated DaVinci Resolve to the newest one that they have for the free version, which is 16.1. And then I took a video, which was 18 minutes and 21 seconds long. And then I, like I said, I rendered that uh, three times. And we'll just get into the uh, testing. The first one that I tested was the Deep Cool Castle 280 RGB. And after the three runs, uh, the average temperature of the CPU was 66 degrees. The Average temperature of the GPU was 75 degrees. And the average render time was 3 minutes and 38 seconds. So I took the render time and the uh, length of the video. And I uh, made a little ratio. And it rendered it 5.07 times faster. So that's pretty cool. Now the maximum temperature on the uh, CPU during those runs was 74 degrees and the maximum temperature of the GPU was 75 degrees. So then I ran the uh, batch of uh, the video being rendered six times in a row and near the end of that the uh, CPU temperature was 67 degrees 
The max temperature that it went to was 74.1 degrees. The GPU temperature was 78 degrees. And the average render time was 3 minutes and 38.7 seconds. So then I let it sit for 10 minutes just to cool down. And the average temp before I started all this was 37.8 degrees. And then after the 10 minute cool down, it was 36 degrees. So that's pretty cool. It actually went down a little bit more. And then after that, I have, oh, I placed it five. So I thought, well, I'll play that for a little bit for an hour and just see what the temperature is on the uh, CPU. So I did, and uh, it was uh, 56 degrees. I took that AO out and I got a couple pictures for you. First picture is a picture of the Castle 280 RGB in the uh, system. You're looking at that now. And then I carefully took it out, trying not to disturb the uh, thermal paste. And that way there, I took the second picture and as you can see, it does cover a lot of the IHS. It's only got those two little bits on the side that is not uh, covering. So I was guessing between 85 and 90%, and I did it mathematically, and it was in between those two figures. So pretty sure that's about what the coverage was on it. So it's definitely covering almost all of the block, but it isn't a full coverage. But... It's still pretty good though, because I mean, it covers most of it. So then after I took it out, I cleaned her up and I put in the deep cool castle 240 EX. And then I ran the test again. So when I ran the test again on that, at the beginning, before I started the idle temp, was 29 degrees. Now that is 8.8 .8 degrees lower than the Castle 280 RGB. So it's looking favorable. So that's pretty good. So then I rendered the video three times in a row and the average for the uh, 240EX was the CPU temperature was 62.7 degrees. The GPU temperature was 74 degrees. And the uh, render time was 3 minutes and 37 seconds. And the ratio I figured out was 5.09 so it's just a little bit faster than the other one now the maximum temperature that the cpu went up to was 70 degrees and the maximum temperature that the gpu went up to was 76 degrees during the runs so then i ran the um video six times in a row and rendered it. And the temperature at the end of that was 63.5 degrees. And the max temperature that the CPU had gotten up to was 72.8 degrees. The maximum GPU temperature was 76 degrees. And the average render time was 3 minutes and 37.5 seconds. Now, basically, it's beating out the, the 280 RGB on pretty much everything right now. After the 10 minute uh, cool down period, uh, the temperature idle temperature went down to 29.5 degrees. So it was 29 when it started, 29.5 after 10 minutes, 
not bad. Um, that is a 6.5 degrees difference than the 280 at the end of the runs. So then I played Civ 5 for an hour and the CPU was 54 degrees. So definitely the Deep Cool Castle 240EX is definitely a better cooler than the Castle 280 RGB because on everything it was lower. Like when I did the, th the three separate runs, the average temperature was 3.3 degrees cooler for the 240EX. The maximum temperature was four degrees cooler for the 240EX. And the GPU was, no, it was one degree more for the maximum. It's one degree less for the average, and for the maximum, it was one degree more. Hmm. That's a little different. But anyway, odd one out. And then whenever I did it the six times, it was... 3.5 degrees cooler for the 240X and for the max temperature it was 1.3 degrees cooler for the CPU on the 240X and then the GPU was 2 degrees cooler and the average time was 1.2 seconds faster for the 240EX. So that's actually really pretty good. I have one more picture I can show you. I'll put it up now. And that's just a picture of the 240EX castle, deep cool castle 240EX uh, in the system. I didn't take it out because it's still in there because so far it's the best one. So what I'm planning on doing is trying some air coolers because I heard that the air coolers were pretty good. And these ones here aren't full coverage blocks on the uh, AIOs, the, the two that I have. Um, they're only covering, what, 85 90%, whereas yeah, the, the air coolers are covering 100%. So what I'm getting is the Deep Cool Fryzen, and I'm getting the Noctua. Uh, the 140 millimeter one, well, one with the fan on it, 140 millimeter fan. So that's what I did. I weighed it and I found it. It was only like a dollar more than the Fryzen. I did not want to get the Wraith Ripper by Cooler Master because it is like 80 bucks more than the other ones. So in, well, in Canada. So I, uh, so I did not go for that one at all. Just the other two. Now those two should be up, um, I think it's next week I'm getting them. So I should have the video up next week also. I'll play around with that and see what I can do. And that's pretty much it for today. If you like the video, thumbs up. If you don't like the video, thumbs down. I want to wish everybody a wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Bye.